If visits from high-profile players are today's global currency, then Myanmar is building up a handsome surplus. After nearly a half century of isolation, the country is coming out of the dark, and the spotlight is being shed on its energy potential. At the World Energy Congress in South Korea, Shell's Peter Vosser described a unique opportunity, which rarely happens in the oil business. It's a fascinating journey. It's a very unique one where you get a country of, what, 60 million people coming into the economy, the global economy. That hasn't happened too, too many times. Myanmar exported its first barrel of oil back in 1853, but with current production of just over 20,000 barrels a day, it is punching well below its potential weight. The country ranks 34th in terms of proven gas reserves, but that was before this re-emergence as a major source of energy. The potential. The chief executive of GDF Suez, the giant French power producer, expressed his desire to be part of this growth. If we would have the opportunity one day uh, to be present there and to accompany the transformation and the, the development of uh, Myanmar, we would go there. They are not alone. More than 60 investment projects have been approved for exploration blocks in the oil and gas sector since the country's elections and the move towards political reform. When this Congress last convened in 2010, Myanmar was just starting to lift the shutters on its economy and welcome investment into the oil and gas sectors. It's not a major producer, at least not yet, but one cannot overlook its geostrategic positioning. Myanmar has had a pipeline into Thailand since 2000, and a second one is on the way. China took full advantage of the opportunity to build two of its own, allowing energy to flow without shipping worries through the Straits of Malacca while gaining a western seaboard at the Bay of Bengal. Well, the location is great, but also there, there is much more oil and gas there than these reserve numbers indicate. These are 50 years old numbers. When people go in there with the new technologies, they are liable to find a lot more. International oil companies, also known as the IOCs, are eager to loosen Beijing's early grip on Myanmar. The IOCs have come in and, and, and they're gonna get a fair crack at it. We will certainly do our best. The challenge for Myanmar's president, Ten Sen, is turning all this attention into long-term investment for the newly opened economy. John Defterius, CNN, Daegu, South Korea.